Hello everybody and welcome to another Toontown Corporate Clash informational video, this time for the long-awaited version 1.3 update, also known as the Hires and Heroes update. And man, I have been waiting a long time to say that. My name is Tedster and I'm the creative lead for Toontown Corporate Clash. I'm joined today to discuss the action-packed 1.3 update with Maven, one of our game design leads, Main, one of our technical lead assistants, and Lemmy, one of our game design lead assistants. Before getting started today, we'd like to give you an update on development. As it currently stands as of the time of this video releasing, we are finishing up the vast majority of assets and implementation and are currently entering the polishing stages of the 1.3 update. Just to set your expectations a little bit, I know we say this every time we release a major update, but I can assure you that the version 1.3 update is, without a doubt, by far our largest and most expansive release to date, being larger than both the 1.1 and 1.2 updates combined. I'm pleased to tell you that despite the lengthiness of this video, the content discussed in today's video really only covers, I'd say, around a half of the content soon to be coming to Toontown Corporate Clash. 1.3 has truly been a long time coming. We've been working on this update for well over 17 months now. Initially, this update was intended to be of a smaller caliber with a target date of, uh, last July. Yup, you heard that right. A full year ago was the initial target date. 1.3 was only supposed to expand on the social aspects of the game, but things happen and uh, well, let's just say that it'll be worth the wait. Today, we'll primarily be focusing on the social aspects of the update, with a ton of gameplay being shown throughout the duration of this video. We have a lot to cover today, so be sure to grab a snack and make yourself comfortable. I'll be back later in the video to discuss some more exciting stuff with you all, but in the meantime, I'm going to kick it over to Lemmy who's going to get things started. When you load version 1.3, you'll be greeted with a brand new game menu across the top of your screen. At the far left of the screen is the new chat panel. When opening the chat panel, it expands into a new and modernized chat log, now capable of slash command support. This chat log features several tabs for filtering chat. A main tab, which displays all chat history from the current session, a Whispers tab, which displays all incoming Whispers, an Alerts tab, which displays alerts such as invasions and daily boosts, an NPC tab, which displays only NPC dialogue for easy reading, and a Fifth tab, which we'll get to later. And for moments where you don't have time to type, Speed Chat is readily available in both the minimized and full format. In addition to the chat log and speed chat, the chat panel also features a dedicated Unite dropdown for quick access and separation from speed chat. You'll never have to worry about accidentally uniting when training doodles ever again. But what's that little star button, you ask? Don't fret, you'll learn about it soon. For now, let's turn our attention over to the right side of the screen. As mentioned in some of Clash's blog posts, the 1.3 update overhauls in-game social content, one of which being the new social panel. To go alongside the new icon, the social panel has a renovated friends list and a couple of new major features such as the notification panel, which displays friend requests, group invites, and more. Please note that everything in this trailer is subject to change. It's all a work in progress. Alright folks, let's go ahead and get started with the social panel. So, Portal Group is going to go ahead and crack open the new social button sitting on the top right of the screen. And the first thing that you're going to notice is that, well, the window that opens up is probably a lot larger than you were expecting. <laughs> the social panel incorporates a lot of new major social infrastructure inside of it. So do note that all the new UI introduced into this update, such as the chat log, the notification deck, and the social panel can independently have their sizes adjusted in the sticker book to your liking. Now, what you're looking at here is the new friends list in the first of three categories of the social panel. The functionality is similar to the current friends list, but with several major quality of life improvements. Such as, hey, now you finally have a proper scroll bar to quickly navigate through your entire friends list. The subtitle here also tells you how many friends you have, how many friends are online, and how many tunes are nearby. And, in addition, the add friend button now incorporates a notification deck as seen here. The biggest quality of life improvement by far, though, is the addition of a brand new configure mode. Once you press the gear button here, you can make massive edits or other quick configurations to specific friends. When you're in configure mode, you can click on friends in order to select them. Select as many as you like, and then you can right click or press the highlight configure selected button to open an action drop down menu. With just one tune selected, you can view their stats or send a whisper to them. If they happen to be your friend, then you also have the option to make them a favorite friend. Favorite friends will appear at the very top of your friends list above everybody else. In addition, their name tag will turn a blue color when they're nearby. 
You can also use the drop down menu to remove teams as friends, or to invite them to your group if you are in one. Configure mode is great for easily making fast adjustments to your friends list that you couldn't really make before. You might choose to select several friends, and then open the context menu to remove all of them at once if you so desire. The future's now! We hope that this overhaul of the friends list will make it easier to navigate and manipulate overall. Now, we'll go on and move to the next section in just a moment. I'm sure you're all wondering what these tabs at the bottom are for anyways. See, when I first started playing Corporate Clash back in 2018, I was a bit upset by the lack of solution for being able to easily find people to run buildings, facilities, and bosses with. The best solution that we had at the time was a little channel in the game's Discord server, which I'm sure a handful of you might remember. But finally, four years later, I'm proud to finally present a new in-game solution. In the version 1.3 update, Corporate Clash will finally have an in-game group tracker, no holds barred. You can consider them to be something like boarding groups in a whole new way. Though they have been now removed entirely and integrated with this new system. However, groups are vastly improved compared to boarding groups. First, groups are game-wide. You can join any group on the group tracker as long as you're in a safe area. For example, while you have to be in Cellbot HQ to create a VP group, you don't necessarily have to be in Cellbot HQ to join that VP group. You don't even have to be in the same district, as long as you aren't occupied with a battle or boss or other activity. Second, you can chat directly with other members of a group using a new chat log. This will be demonstrated later. Third, the groups that are available for you to join are entirely personalized. For example, if you're on a new team, you're not going to be able to join any VP group unless you have completed a full disguise and also have the merits for it. We've applied manual restrictions to several different group types. For example, you're not going to be able to join or create any boss group without the relevant disguise. You also can't join any cog building groups if you haven't even visited the playground that they're in. Or we've also included some weird edge cases, like you can't join racing groups if you don't have the jelly beans to fulfill any of the race deposits. We've implemented these restrictions in favor of the player in order to create a smoother gameplay experience. Such as if you're working on your executive lawbot suit, for example, attempting to make or join an overclocked CLO group will warn you that you still have to complete a directive if you have one available. And do note that being warned about a group is different from being unable to join it entirely, because in this case the game will simply warn you, hey, you may not want to join this group quite yet. By default, groups that are restricted for access are not shown on the group tracker. You can change this by opening a filter drop down here and changing to access mode. The filter also allows you to search for groups of any type in any location. Oh, and before I forget, you can also now create groups for cog buildings, racing, golfing, trolley, table games, and fishing. Let's learn a bit more about how the group tracker works by going ahead and creating the group right now. You'll first note that the groups that you can create are dependent on where you are. As mentioned earlier, an important restriction of the new group system is that the group owner must be present at the relevant group location in order to create the group. So, suppose I need a cog building for a task. Creating a group for this is a pretty easy task. Once I find the building that I want to take down, I can head over to the Groups tab and create a group for it. Right now, this group is marked to be private. A private group means that the group will not be visible on the group tracker at all, meaning that only people from within your group can invite others to it. Private groups function similarly to how boarding groups currently work, they're invite only. But since I do want this group to be public, I'll make sure that I set it to public here. I'll also go ahead and invite one of my friends to the group too. The quick invite menu here will allow you to invite tunes into your group instantaneously upon the group's creation. And once I'm good to go, all I have to do from here is just hit create group. From here I'm now taken to a panel with information about my group. I can see the status of the tunes that have been invited, and by pressing the little drop down arrows I can see their gag stats as well. As the group owner, any tunes that I invite will have space reserved for them in the group. Invites that come from anyone else would not reserve room for other tunes. Also, as a group owner, I could press the Actions button to get a drop down of options for my group. I could quickly toggle the group's privacy setting from public to private, and I can also disband the group. If this were a facility or boss group, this drop down will also cl include an action button for teleporting directly to the facility or boss. And that just about wraps up my segment here for the group tracker. Hope you're all as excited for it as I am, because this has been a long time coming. What you're seeing right now is a product of nearly a year's worth of development. Now, this next part may prompt a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, but bear with me here. I promise we have something cooking we think you guys will come to enjoy. Let's talk about clubs. The initial run of clubs back in 2018 isn't exactly something that we, or the community, looks back on fondly. They were dysfunctional, lacking polish, and had little in the way of features that made them actually matter. Ultimately, this resulted in hostility due to how thoughtless the implementation was. 
they did much more harm than good, hence their removal. However, time has passed, and Corporate Clash has changed, both its crew and community, and we are extremely confident that the time has finally come to give clubs a proper reintroduction. If there are any tunes out there still uncertain about clubs making their return, I urge you to give them a chance. We do have a strong track record of subverting expectations, after all. Plenty of expansion on the concept of clubs have been made, all aiming to address the issues that were present from their initial go, along with fostering a stronger sense of community among players. Let's get into what that new club experience is all about. To get started with making a club, let's pay a visit to Toon Hall. Inside, you'll see a new centerpiece run by both an old friend and someone new. Do Vinci has returned from SkyClan, with her brother Bro Vinci in tow to help us Toons team up and stop the cogs. Do will be able to help you create your club. Simply pick a name and an icon to start out with, and 20,000 jelly beans later, you'll have yourself a club. As a side note, multiple clubs can indeed have the same name. Once that's done, pop open your friends list, click on the drop down menu, and invite whoever you'd like. When in a club, your club will be visible in the all new social panel under the last tab. On the main tab here, you'll get an overview of the club. You'll be able to see the club name, level, experience, and description. Additionally, you'll be able to see how many members of the club are online, the amount of currency the club has, the current club task progress, and any boosters that the club has active. The club's description can be set by the owner at any time by editing the text in the box. Clubs additionally feature a brand new currency, club coins. Club coins are earned by doing activities around Toontown with the other members of your club. Note that club coins are not earned for solo activities, meaning that you will have to work together. Club coins provide two main benefits to your club. First, the act of earning club coins grants your club experience to increase its level. The next will require us to switch over to Bro's side of the club station, the club shop, which we'll discuss later. Switching over to the task page, here you may select one of three different club tasks. Completing the club task will net your club a generous amount of club coins. While the club task is progressed by the whole club, the club task does not require you to actively work with the other tunes in your club to contribute to its completion. These tasks are ordered by difficulty, and the objectives of the task scale with the size of the club in mind. There is a time limit, however. Wait too long and your club task will expire, and only completed club tasks earn rewards. Let's switch over to the member page. This will allow you to see a full list of all your clubmates, allowing you to view each member and their profiles. With sufficient permissions, this is also where club members can be promoted, demoted, or kicked. Switching pages once again, we'll take a look at the history page. This page tracks all recent events within the club. It's an audit log of sorts, documenting information such as invites, kicks, promotions, and demotions. The list, however, is not unlimited and only documents recent events. And on the final page, you have the club settings. This is where the club's owner can configure roles and set up permissions. The role system is customizable and can be personalized for the club to the owner's liking. This is great for both smaller groups of friends who can set more general permissions for club members and larger clubs with strict role hierarchies. Now that your club is set up to your liking, let's get into what else we can do with it. Once a club has been created, head on over to Brovinci's side of the desk for the club shop. The club shop is a major expansion to original club progression, offering countless upgrades, items, and personalization options to unlock. All you need is a nice tall stack of club coins to trade it for. But earning coins isn't the hard part, it's choosing what to buy. Not to worry, the club shop is organized to make purchases easy to find so you can get back to completing tasks. The Items and Upgrades tab is for clubs that just aren't satisfied with the 10 tune capacity. It offers member capacity upgrades up to a maximum of 50 tunes, as well as exclusive club items. The club owner is also allowed to purchase name changes here. The Club Boosters tab allows club members to reap extra benefits in battle and more. Boosters, which give tunes temporary boosts to various stats, have been divided into multiple categories, encouraging collaboration with other clubmates as clubs decide which booster would be best. Each booster lasts 48 hours from purchase. Clubs start out with a single booster slot, but it's possible to upgrade to a maximum of three boosters at a time. These boosters stack with personal boosters, maximizing rewards. And they certainly look tasty, don't they? 
Weaker boosters are affordable to a majority of clubs, but don't offer as complex of rewards. However, as your club levels up, more advanced boosters become available, each one giving a temporary boost to a variety of activities. Only the most powerful of clubs can afford exclusive boosters such as the All-Star Booster, which boosts every activity possible. Last, but certainly not least, is the Personalization tab, for clubs eager to invest in their creative side. With over 100 unique emblems to choose from, and over 500,000 unique customization combinations for the icon, clubs are able to form a unique identity that represents the tunes within it. There are even exclusive color palettes, like colorful gradients and rainbows. We've been here for quite a while now, but we're not done yet. Chatbox has been giving a full revamp to more thoroughly modernize it. We've managed to survive for so many years with a weird box to use as a chat log, it's about time we get something that's practical. So let's go ahead and open it up and, well, you'll see that this thing is jam-packed with features. You can start typing at any time by pressing the chat key, just like the current chat system. However, there's several massive improvements. As you can see, the tabs at the top allow you to easily filter out specific types of messages, a long requested feature. You can also configure which sections are shown in the main tab in the sticker book. Whispers now function a little bit differently now too, check it out. Whenever I go to whisper someone, my next message will now send directly to them. I can simply type in whatever from here and it'll forward it to them. There's also a couple of dedicated chat channels that are reserved for specific occasions. For example, once you are in a club, you can use a club chat tab here where you can chat freely with all members of your club. Your club's club announcement is posted at the very top of this chat log every day, which is useful in case you would like to keep everyone posted for an upcoming event. You can also perform a club shout in your club, which sends out a whisper to every online member of your club in case something urgent comes up. Do note that the ability to perform either the club announcement or the club shout is linked to your role in the club, and permissions to do so are managed by the club's owner. In addition, you even get an exclusive chat wing for when you're in a group. This temporary chat wing can be extremely useful for reaching out to members of a group and checking in on where they are. Oh, and hey, guess what? All users now have access to a rudimentary set of chat commands. By pressing slash, an additional menu pops up with a list of all available commands. Chat commands can be used to perform special shortcuts. For example, when you're in a safe area, you can use the slash TP command to warp to any playground that you have teleport access to without having to go through the sticker book. You can also use chat commands to swap between channels, set your sound and music volume, check your ping, and much more. Remember that little star on the new chat log and how we'd come back to that later? Well, I have good news for you, that time is now! Introducing the next major expansion to Communication and Corporate Clash, Stickers! Tunes are free to choose from a wide range of 16 toony stickers that encapsulate every tune emotion possible. Gone are the days of typing out I'm happy when you're in a good mood. Now you can show tunes how you feel. Express your true feelings for another tune in-game. Express your anger when things don't go according to plan. Make friends with the new players in Toontown Central. But wait, hold on a moment. Are you not satisfied with the number of stickers in your life? Do you feel stifled by the limitations of only 16 emotions? Through special means, you can unlock up to 16 additional unique stickers. That's a whopping 32 emotions in total. So, you're probably thinking, we went over a whole lot in this video and you're telling me that there's even more content that's coming to the 1.3 update? Well, as stated earlier, this video doesn't even cover the half of it, it being the brand new content that's coming to Toontown Corporate Clash. To emphasize the true scale of this update, 1.3 will include a major game expansion, far beyond what 1.1 and 1.2 had to offer combined. This time around, however, we're not only going to be catering towards players in the endgame, or even one COG department for that matter. Instead, we'll be expanding on the game in ways that will affect all players, both new and old. Every single stage of the game will be affected by this update. So, if you have a new tune, a mid-tier tune, a high-level tune, or even a maxed out tune, you're going to want to hop onto Toontown Corporate Clash and experience everything that this update has to offer. And if you haven't already gotten the memo, trust me, it's a lot. I know we've been cryptic of the content thus far outside of the social oriented parts, so here's just a few things to keep you on the edge of your seat. The 1.3 update will include but is definitely not limited to, tune level cap being increased to level 85, the maximum laugh capacity being increased to 150, a brand new way to experience playgrounds, various new areas to explore and enjoy, new eyelash variants, HD cog models, and yes, skell cogs included reworked animations, gag rebalances, and so much more.
that if I were to talk about everything to come with this update, we'd seriously be here for hours. And that's about it for everything we wanted to cover for today. Thanks everyone for coming today, especially those of you listening in. We know all you tunes out there are excited to dive right into 1.3, as it's been well over a year in the making, but hang tight. For all the announced social content in this video, we will for the first time ever be hosting a short testing server available to our corporate clash partners. This is to help verify that all the features are smooth and stable, ensuring a polished release. While the server will not be accessible to the public, partners will be allowed to stream gameplay on the server and share their experiences with their audiences. If you're a Corporate Clash partner out there listening in, you'll be granted access as soon as it's ready. In addition, we will be inviting a select few members from the community. We will be reaching out to these people soon, though do note we won't be considering any more invites past our initial batch. And finally, a huge thank you to all the tunes out there for supporting Corporate Clash. We'll be back to share more soon.